Hi everyone, welcome to this video where I will be discussing how to solve chemical engineering problems using MATLAB. MATLAB is a powerful tool that can be used to perform complex calculations and simulations, making it an ideal choice for engineers and scientists. In this video, we will be focusing on solving problems in four different areas of chemical engineering physical chemistry, thermodynamics, momentum transfer, and analytical chemistry. <clears throat> this is a MATLAB code that represents a chemical engineering problem solver. The user is presented with the choice of courses they would like to solve problems for physical chemistry, thermodynamics, momentum transfer, or analytical chemistry. Based on the user's input, the code presents them with a list of problems that they can solve for the chosen course. After the user selects a problem, the code prompts the user to input the necessary data to solve the problem, performs the required calculations, and displays the result. This is the output of the code in the previous slide. Let's start with physical, physical chemistry. This code is based for physical chemistry problems, which the user is asked to pick one problem. And this is the in, this is the output of the code in the previous slide. In this section, we will be solving four different problems related to molarity, gas volume, and pressure. To solve these problems, we will be using simple mathematical equations and MATLAB functions. <clears throat> For example, let's say we want to find the molarity of a solution containing 0.5 moles of NaCl in 250 milliliters of water, we can use the following code. By entering the values of volume and moles, the code will calculate the molarity of the solution and display it on the screen. We can also add a prompt at the end of the code asking the user if they want to solve another problem. If the user chooses to continue, the code will clear the variables and start over again. In the second problem of physical chemistry, the first step is to input the temperature, number of moles, and pressure using the input function. We then use the ideal gas law equation, which includes the universal gas constant, to calculate the volume. Finally, we use the fprintf function to display the answer. If the user wishes to solve another problem, they can press 1 and the program will run again, otherwise it will end. Moving on to problem 3, we are asked, what is the mass of a 2.5 mole sample of sodium chloride? We input the molar mass and number of moles using the input function and then use stoichiometry to calculate the mass. Again, we use the fprintf function to display and answer and allow the user to solve another problem if they choose to do so. Finally, problem 4 asks, a sample of gas occupies a volume of 2 liters at a pressure of 1.5 atmosphere. If the pressure is increased to 2.5 atmosphere while the temperature remains constant, what is the new volume of the gas? We input the initial pressure, final pressure, and the initial volume using the input function. We then use Boyle's law, which states that the pressure and volume of a gas are inversely proportional at constant temperature to calculate the final volume. Once again, we use the fprintf function to display and answer and allow the user to continue solving problems if they wish. Moving on to thermodynamics, we will be solving four different problems related to gas volume, temperature, and work. In this section, we will be using the ideal gas law, the first law of thermodynamics, and other thermodynamic equations to solve the problems. This problem involves a piston cylinder system containing 0.5 moles of gas at an initial pressure of 2.5 atmosphere and volume of 1.5 liters. 
the gas is heated at a constant pressure to a final volume of 2.5 liters. We are asked to find the final temperature of the gas. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the initial pressure, initial and final volumes and number of moles of the gas. We then use the ideal gas law to find the initial temperature of the gas using the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature for a constant pressure process, we can find the final temperature of the gas. The final temperature is then displayed on the screen. We are also given the option to continue solving problems or exit the program. This problem involves a refrigerator with a coefficient of performance of 4 that consumes 500 joules of work. We are asked to find the amount of heat removed from the generator. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the COP and the amount of work consumed by the refrigerator. Using the definition of COP, we can find the amount of heat removed from the generator. The amount of heat removed is then displayed on the screen. We are also given the option to continue solving problems or exit the program. For the third problem of thermodynamics, it involves a system that releases 1,500 joules of heat and does 1,000 joules of work on the surroundings. We are asked to find the change in internal energy of the system. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the amount of heat released and work done by the system. Using the first law of thermodynamics, we can find the change in internal energy of the system. The change in internal energy is then displayed on the screen. We are also given the option to continue solving problems or exit the program. For the last problem for thermodynamics, this problem involves a system undergoing an isothermal process at a temperature of 300 Kelvin and absorbing 500 joules of heat. We are asked to find the change in entropy of the system. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the temperature and the amount of heat absorbed by the system. Using the definition of entropy, we can find the change in entropy of the system. The change in entropy is then displayed on the screen. We are also given the option to continue solving problems or exit the program. Now let's move on to momentum transfer. In this section, we will also be solving four different problems related to fluid flow, viscosity, and Reynolds number. We will be using equations such as the Navier-Stokes equation, the Reynolds number equation, and other fluid mechanics equations to solve the problems. For the first problem, we have a fluid with a density of 800 kg per cubic meter flowing through a horizontal pipe with a diameter of 0.1 meter at a velocity of 5 meters per second. We are asked to find the mass flow rate of the fluid. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the values for the fluid density, pipe diameter, and fluid velocity. We then calculate the cross-sectional area of the pipe using the diameter and use with the density and velocity to find the mass flow rate of the fluid using the mass flow rate equation. The result is then displayed on the screen. For the second problem, we have a tank with a volume of 1 cubic meter filled with a liquid with a density of 1,000 kg per cubic meter. A piston with a diameter of 0.2 meter is pushed down into the liquid with a force of 500 newtons. 
we are asked to find the pressure exerted by the liquid on the piston. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the values for the piston diameter and the force exerted on it. We then calculate the area of the piston using the diameter and use this along with the force to find the pressure exerted by the liquid on the piston using the pressure equation. The result is then displayed on the screen. For the third problem, we, uh, we have a tank containing 1,000 kg of water connected to a pipe with a diameter of 0 0.05 meters and the length of 10 meters. If the pressure drop across the pipe is 10 kilopascals, we are asked to find the flow rate of water through the pipe assuming laminar flow. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the values for the pipe diameter, pressure drop, length and density, and viscosity of water. We then use these values along with the pipe flow equation to find the flow rate of water through the pipe. The result is then displayed on the screen. In this problem, we have a gas flowing through a 5 cm diameter pipe at a velocity of 20 meters per second. If the density of the gas is 0.8 kg per cubic meter, we are asked to find the mass flow rate of the gas. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. And we start by inputting the values for the pipe diameter, gas velocity, and density. We then calculate the cross-sectional area of the pipe using the diameter and use this along with the density and velocity to find the mass flow rate of the gas using the mass flow rate equation. The result is displayed on the screen. Lastly, we will be solving problems related to analytical chemistry. In this section, we will also be solving four different problems related to acid-base titration, pH calculation, and concentration determination. We will be using equations such as the henderson hasselbalch equation, the concentration equation, and other analytical chemistry equations to solve the problems. For the first problem, it involves a 0.1 molarity solution of sodium hydroxide being titrated with a 0.1 molarity solution of hydrochloric acid. We are asked to find the volume of hydrochloric acid required to reach the equivalence point if 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution is used. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the concentration and volume of sodium hydroxide and the concentration of hydrochloric acid. Using the stoichiometry of the balanced chemical equation, we find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide used in the titration. Then, using the volume and concentration of hydrochloric acid, we can find the volume of hydrochloric acid required to reach the equivalence point, and then the final volume is dis then displayed. For the second problem, it involves preparing a solution of sodium chloride and finding its molarity. The code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the mass of sodium chloride, volume of water, and molar mass of sodium chloride. Using the definition of molarity, we can find the number of moles of sodium chloride present in the solution. Then using the volume of water, we can find the molarity of the solution. The final molarity is then displayed. 
for the third problem, this code calculates the concentration of nitrate ions in a wastewater sample using spectrophotometry. To determine the concentration of nitrate ions, we use the beer lambert law, which states that the absorbance of a sample is directly proportional to its concentration and the path, path length of the cell. It prompts the user to input the path length of the cell containing the sample, the molar, the molar absorptivity of nitrate ions at 220 nanometers, and the absorbance of the sample at 220 nanometers. Then it calculates the concentration of nitrate ions using the beer lambert law and displays the result. Finally, it prompts the user to decide whether to continue solving problems or exit the program. If the user chooses to continue, the program is restarted, otherwise the program is terminated. Lastly, this problem involves using gas chromatography to find the concentration of an unknown compound. The, co the code snippet for this problem is shown on the screen. We start by inputting the peak area of the unknown compound. Using the calibration curve equation, we can find the concentration of the unknown compound in parts per million. The final concentration is then displayed. And that's it for the video on solving chemical engineering problems with MATLAB. I hope that you found this video helpful and that, and that it gave you some insight into how MATLAB can be used to solve complex chemical engineering problems. Remember, these are just a few examples and there are many other problems that you can solve using MATLAB. So keep practicing and exploring and don't forget to check out the MATLAB documentation for more information. Thanks for watching.